Okay, it's great to see you all here again. Great to be with the Grand Valley Church. Again, so many of your brothers and sisters in the Lord are praying for you and thinking of you. They're getting inspired by what God is doing amongst you and through you. We hear about it on Facebook. We hear about it through word of mouth. And we send all of our love and all of our prayers to all of you. Last week, we began a series of sermons called Belief That Sees the Glory of God. And, uh, and, and, and we launched this based on our kind of springboard passage, John chapter 11. And I'll just read the, the latter part of that. This is where he raised Jesus from the dead. And this is kind of our foundational verse that describes what this series is about. John 11, verse 38 through 44, it says, Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there's a bad odor, for he's been there four days. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Again, we talked about it last week, but what an inspiring story. I mean, this is literally a dead, rotten, stinking guy is raised from the dead. I mean, inexplicably. There's no other way to, to rationalize, well, maybe he wasn't actually dead. I mean, he's in the tomb for four days. There's a bad odor coming out of it. Jesus comes up, and just in a matter of words, he just says, Lazarus, come out, and boom. I mean, the guy comes out still wearing the grave clothes, and he's like, take off the grave clothes and let him go. And then there goes the guy, raised from the dead. How inspiring. But the most striking thing about this whole story is the line where Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? What a cool line. If you believe, if you believe, you would see the glory of God. This is what we all really want in our lives. I mean, we're encouraged to hear what God is doing in other people's lives, you know, maybe in a far off land or something. We're encouraged to read stories in the scriptures. That's encouraging to see what God is doing. But if we're really honest, we don't want to just hear about the glory of God somewhere else. We want to see the glory of God with our own eyes. We want to see the glory of God in our own campus ministry. We want to see the glory of God in our own Bible talks. We want to see the glory of God in our own church, in our own family, in our own friends, and in our own lives. We want to be able to look into the mirror and truly see the glory of God, how God is powerfully, inexplicably, miraculously working in our lives. Well, here, Jesus says the key to that happening is not your talent, it's not your longevity in the kingdom. It's not your personality. It's not your looks. But it is your belief in him. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. What a cool promise. So what we've been posing in this, in this series is, what does it mean to really believe? If there's a promise from God that if we believe, we will see the glory of God,